Hey guys, today is Monday. It is the 23rd and uh, it is about 5 in the p.m. thereabouts. Um, just jumping on real fast to get this video done that I told you guys I was going to do in the last one talking about disability and uh, <coughs> excuse me um, basically a lot of you guys are worried about filing and you know how to go about the whole process of filing for disability and all that good stuff um, basically there are a couple ways to go about it the main way which is the way I went is uh, I just filed online and um, went that route. Other people can also file um, for like those that are in the hospital for a major illness or whatever and uh, there's usually somebody there in human resources that will help you do that but um, in my case, in the normal case, you file online or go through Social Security you know, at their office or whatever and um, nine times out of ten it will be denied <laughs> so yeah it's not an easy process some some cases you know that are more cut and dry visible as it were or more apt to be approved than those you know like things that we deal with that are not so noticeable um, that are not seen those tend to be denied on the first go around um, what happened with me is I filed, got denied, and I ended up getting a lawyer. Now, you can't get a lawyer from the get-go um, that I know of. What are you doing? Free? Stop looking. Um, so, you, you, know, you do your application. If you get denied, then you go for a lawyer, which is what I did. And uh, even then, they denied it on that appeal. So it ended up going to um, court, well, before, not really a court, but it was a hearing, you know, you go in front of a judge, and, um, yeah. <laughs> so, it is not a fun process. I did that on the first go around, and like I said, I got denied, went to court, and um, he approved it because, you know, she was able to get, gather all the information and stuff. Uh, which brings me to this, um, before you apply, try to get as much information as you possibly can. Have everything ready because there are a lot of questions, they want to know certain things and depending on what the illness is, um, they will send you more paperwork to fill out and um, they will also want to send you to their doctors and which is not always, it's not a bad thing but it's not necessarily what you think it can be either. I mean, they sent me to a psychologist, they sent me to their doctors, and, you know, it was hard. And even after they had done that on that first go-around, they denied it. That's when I got the lawyer and stuff. So, uh, in any case, um, with me, when it was first approved, it, um, the judge put in to be reviewed in a year's time. So, when that time came around, uh, and mind you, this is a timely process. From the first time that, from the time that I filed, till I went to court was just over a year. That's how mine went. Others may go quicker, some may go longer. Now, when that year was up, um, they did a review, sent me the same sort of paperwork that was sent, you know, that I had done when I first had filed. And uh, it was denied. <laughs> so they sent me to their doctors, and again, and um, you know, did some. Uh, now, mind you, in that the first time that I did that, I was diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis after I was on disability because I didn't see doctors beforehand. And the only diagnosis that I had before were just de uh, degenerative disc disease and arthritis and among a few other things but uh, in any case so during this appeal 
after the review, they sent me to their doctors, and he had done x-rays, because this is after this, the, you know, I was claiming ankylosing spondylitis, basically adding to what I was already on for, and uh, they said that, uh, I found out later, that they didn't show any, you know, any AS, you know, that wasn't relevant, and yada, 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 so they denied it, and... It eventually went back to court again during this whole time, which took probably about four years during this whole appeal. It was really, really stretched out because they would, you know, sit, they sent me to their doctors again. I appealed it again. They denied it again. And it just went on and on and on until finally, you know, I went to court with it and seen another judge. Um, if that is the time period you want to be careful in a review time, because if it gets to a point where you go to see the judge, there, the option is also given to keep your payments coming in, your um, benefits coming in. Now, I chose to do that because I didn't have any other way to live. But if you are denied, after if the judge denies it, and I didn't know this until I went to see him, but apparently there is an appeal on him as well, but... Um, I don't know about the whole, if you can continue your benefits during, after that point, I'm not sure. But what I'm saying is, I know I, I feel like I'm jumping all over the place. If he denies your, you know, denies the, the, um, the case, basically, they can actually require you to pay back everything that you had gotten during that whole review period. So with me, it was almost close to about three and a half to four years that it, he, had he not approved it, I could have very well been made to pay back. And that is scary. So I took a big leap um, when I made that decision during that whole process. It was, it was very scary because that really, it can be bad. But this is where everything gets... Uh, doesn't get hairy, but it's just, you know, be honest. From the get-go, get everything that you can get. Be upfront with everything. Um, and just be completely honest with and everything. Now, they also ask you for reference, not ref really, re I guess it's references. They give you, you know, a section to put in, like, family members or friends or whoever that they can contact and talk to, <clears throat> they never did that with me in either case. From the get-go, even to the review time, they never did that. Um, yeah, I don't even know why they ask if they, they I don't know. But um, in any case, um, I'm trying to think of what else. When you go to see the doctors that they send you to, you cannot get the reports or anything from them. Um, you can probably, tr you can go through Social Security to get them, but you can't go to the doctors to get the reports, and I think that sucks. You know, you have to, that's just the part of the rules that you have to play by, so don't expect to, when you go see the doctors, to talk to him like it's a normal visit, because it's not, and don't expect to get any kind of paperwork or results from the doctors, because you're not going to get them. You would have to go through just, or Social Security to get those, and, um, if you're in a, if by this time, if you're in a position where you already have your attorney, they get that stuff. So, which is what mine ended up doing. Because I didn't know I could go to, through Social Security and get those reports. But, um, but she ended up getting them, so it was all good. Um, I find it amazing, though. I don't want to say the doctors are working for Social Security, but in my case, I just found it very funny. Well, not, not haha funny, but funny that um, when I was in a review period after that year and they had sent me back to the doctors and I was now claiming ankylosing spondylitis among other things, uh, the x-rays, their people said that they didn't show any AS and everything was perfectly fine. But when I went back to my rheumatologist, um, or my newer rheumatologist, he had done some x-rays and we're only talking about, at that point, it was like a six-month time frame from the time that Social Security did their x-rays to when my doctor did. 
So, apparently in six months time, <laughs> my neck had already almost fused, my hips were fusing, um, certain parts of the spine were fusing, and among other things going on back there. But they showed nothing was wrong. They, should, they said everything was fine. So that kind of tells you that, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't want to say that they were working for them, but it's almost as if, we'll just say they, whoever worked and did the reports read them wrong, apparently. I'll just go there just to, you know. But we all know that that type of damage does not occur in a six month, six month time span. We may have all the pain, but the damage itself is not done in that length of time because some, you know, our damage is takes years and yeah. So it was there. They just said it wasn't. But um, in any case, um, insurance. Okay. Now, when I started, I had no insurance, and from the time I first filed to the time I was approved was right at the two-year period. And don't quote me on this, but I still think it's two years. I'm not 100% sure. Um, it's, it's something you'll have to check into. But um, if you get a quicker approval, I don't think the Medi Medicare part kicks in until um, there's a sort of like a year after you're approved. But I had already was in that time frame from the time I had applied. And... I think I had the Medicare uh, for my primary, and then I think I had my other insurance, which is the secondary, which they take care of. I'm not sure exactly how that works, and each state may be different, so I'm not, I can't really get into everything because I don't know the logistics of it and all that good stuff, but, you know, you d just do the best you can. Um, the main thing I want to get across is just be completely honest, especially when you go to see the judge. Be completely honest, answer all the questions. Um, you have to deal with the doctors whenever they make appointments and they send you appointments in the mail to go see their doctors and go see them. Be on time. Um, you have to play the game their way, basically. Um, when I went to court, not the first time, the first time was pretty easy, the second time was a little bit more scary for me. And when I'm saying be honest, is because I seen people that were in the waiting room waiting to be waiting to see judges because there's a lot of judges at this place that I went to that day, and you could just tell, I could just tell that they were there just to sponge, and I'm not being judgmental. I'm just being. I know what I seen. Um, the perfect example is, and I say this, and I know it sounds weird because we don't want to be judged. However, I can tell when somebody's faking shit. <laughs> so, um, and the prime example is this gentleman was in there. He was probably in his 30s, maybe early 40s, and was there, there, there with his wife or his girlfriend, whoever she was. And um, he, they called his name. Well, first, when he were, first walked in, you would have up and down. He was dying. I mean, he had a cane. He couldn't hardly walk. He was just, I mean, he was a mess. So, I, during the time we were waiting, he was sitting there, and there was just certain movements. There were just certain things that I picked up on real quick, and it was like, you know, this guy's full shit. I, I knew that. So, he goes in to see the judge, my judge. My, he was there, he was before I was, so I was little, that made me nervous too. So, he goes in. It took him like five minutes to get from his seat to get to the door to, to go in and see this judge. He wasn't in there ten minutes. He comes out uh, walking perfectly fine, carrying his cane, motions at the lady like, let's get, let's get out of here. You know, and he was just downright livid. So, he got caught in a lie. And, you know, that makes it hard for those of us that have legitimate issues, and yeah, that's why I say just be completely honest. I mean, if the judge says, ask you a question like, you know, how far can you walk? Be honest. You know, on a good day, I can walk three, four, five blocks, okay. On a bad day, maybe it's just a block. 
be honest with that. D don't fabricate and say, you know, oh, I have a block and I have to sit down, that type of thing. Um, because they know, they already have the reports, they have everything there. So just be honest with them. Don't think because you say you can do a certain thing that that's going to, you know, uh, defer his decision against you because they, they, they do realize that with certain illnesses, some things we can do one day, we can't do it the next day. You know, so... But, um, yeah. And I'm trying to think of anything else. Again, it's just a long process. You have to be patient. Uh, get everything that you can possibly get before you go. And that's about it. I know it's probably, everybody may already know all of this, I don't know, but it's, you know, at least I'm just getting it out there. For those of you who are nervous about it, and there is a reason to be nervous, because it's a, it can be a long process, and it's very stressful, and very nerve-wracking, and it's just, it's, it can be, you know, it, it consumes you, but don't try not to let it consume you. Furthermore, don't give up on living. Okay, just because you are applying for disability and you have somebody, whether it be a family member or whether it be a friend or somebody on the outside, is looking in and doesn't see the whole situation, don't let people make you feel like you can't do anything. If you want to go out, you go out. Just because you're applying for disability doesn't mean you have to stop living, period. Um, and I say that because I've had people, well, what do you want disability for? And, um, well, can't you work so many hours a day? Well, why can't you do this? You know what I'm saying? So don't let people think, make you think that you have to stop living just because you're applying for it. And if you're approved, it means you're a hermit. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah, don't do that. You have to live. I mean, if you want to go out and have some fun, you go out and have some fun. You deserve that. We have been through enough. And um, for those of these people that don't understand it, they're not going to understand it. Until they sit down or they can get inside our bodies for 24 hours, they're not going to understand it. So the ones that do follow up and they do research and they try to understand it, kudos to them. Thank you for doing so. To the rest of them, pretty much, in my opinion, and I don't mean to be like this, but if you don't have the time to try to understand something, Pretty much, screw you, move along, I don't need you, because I don't need that extra baggage of bringing my shit down. You know what I'm saying? So, alright, on that note, I'm going to leave it alone, because whenever I get into these discussions like this, I tend to get a little pissed. So, alright, let me get off here for now. I hope some of this helped. Um, yeah, again, just be patient, be honest, get all your ducks in a row, and hope for the best. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. Alright, I'm going to get up here for now. I'm going to try to do a, um, yeah, whenever I start the Remicade, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try, I'm going to talk to my rheumatologist and see if it's okay if I film in there. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't, depends on the person, on the doctor, I guess, or whoever's there. But I do want to try to get some of that in you know, kind of get that out there as well, because I know some people are afraid of that whole process, and I'm not exactly not afraid of it, because I've never done it yet, but um, I think it'll be fine, and so I'll get that documented and get that out as well. All right, guys, I'll talk to you guys later. Everybody be well, everybody be safe, and that's it.